Hey everybody, I'm Jack Rita. I'm a game designer with Future Pastimes. And in this video, I want to talk about my five favorite epic board games. First of all, what do I consider an epic board game? Well, that is a game that I think is not only highly thematic, but generally involves quite a bit of setup, takes several hours to play, and then almost as much time to put away. Um, so, uh, I'm a big fan of epic board games. I should say that the tiny epic games, uh, while they pack a lot of punch in a small box, I do not consider them to be epic games. Uh, they're certainly epic uh, for their size. Uh, and my favorite of those would be tiny epic galaxies. Uh, but those are not part of this list. And I will start off with what I'm going to call an honorable mention and that would be Gloomhaven. Now, Gloomhaven is actually probably the most epic of all of these games, in, especially in terms of how long it takes to play. But I consider it more of a campaign game. So uh, I don't think anyone has the expectation that they're going to sit down, start playing Gloomhaven, and then keep playing until they have played through the whole thing. Um, that would be certainly epic, but it's also absurd. So I'm not going to count Gloomhaven on this particular list. Uh, I do think it's a great game. Uh, I think it's a fantastic design. I prefer the app, which I play on Steam uh, quite regularly, uh, over the physical one, and that is because of how long it takes to set up and put away. So it's doubly epic in that regard. Uh, but I'm going to start with the games that uh, I play through the whole game in one sitting, and um, th that's what's going to be on this list. So we're going to start with number five, and that's going to be Diplomacy. Um, I've always loved Diplomacy. I've been playing it since the early mid 80s. Uh, I know it has a reputation as a game that ends friendships. I've never had that experience. I've played it with uh, people who were great friends and uh, I'm still friends with them. Uh, and for those uh, few that I'm not really friends with, it had nothing to do with Diplomacy. Um, I think it's a really thematic game. Um, and it's a game that takes hours and hours to play through, especially if at least half of the people playing it are any good. Um, it's Europe. It's about World War I. And you are uh, your own country with your armies and navies trying to capture territories, um, possibly working with other uh, nations, forming alliances. Uh, it's got all the stuff that I love in a board game. So I, I enjoy Diplomacy. It has been a while since the last time I played it, um, and that is partly due to its epic nature. Um, so certainly looking forward to getting that to the table again one of these days. It's one that shines with a lot of players. So if you only have three or four players, I don't really think that Diplomacy is the best experience. Um, five or more, I think, is the minimum. And that's going to be true with a lot of the games on this list. So Number five, Diplomacy. I, I really enjoy that game a lot and looking forward to the next time that I get to play it. Um, the number four game is actually a game that I don't own, but I've played it a few times. I will probably eventually pick it up, and that is Twilight Imperium. Uh, I think it's a terrific design. It's really interesting, uh, even though it's a game that takes, again, hours and hours to play. Um, I always feel very much... Uh, involved in what's going on. Um, I don't feel like you know, while there is some downtime, um, I'm engaged the whole time. Um, and I really love the production uh, that Fantasy Flight has put into it. It's gone through a few iterations, um, and that's part of what I'm waiting for. Is, is there going to be a definitive one? Is there another uh, edition going to come out? Uh, maybe I should wait. Uh, maybe they'll do some kind of epic... Um, Kickstarter or something that puts it all together, and uh, I, I'll, I'll invest in that. Um, so yeah, it is a, it is a really good game. Uh, I learned it uh, right before the pandemic, and um, I just had a, a really good time. It was not hard to learn. Um, I enjoy that it has a lot of different factions in it with different variable player power abilities. Um, that is probably my favorite game mechanism in gaming, so I like that uh, everybody plays a little bit differently. You have certain advantages uh, and possibly disadvantages that you're overcoming. Um, so it's a terrific uh, sci-fi themed game, and I like sci-fi games as well. It feels very thematic, 
And um, yeah, I, I, I do look forward to eventually getting it. I'm not sure on which shelf it's going to live on. I'll figure that out later on. So number four on my list is Twilight Imperium. Uh, number three is a another Fantasy Flight game, and that is Game of Thrones. Uh, I've always been a big fan of the Game of Thrones IP. Um, I started with the books, uh, and I enjoyed the show. I would say 90-some percent of the show was fantastic, some of the best television ever. Uh, I think the game does a really good job of capturing the spirit of uh, that world and of the books. I would say my only real complaint with Game of Thrones is I think that it should have more of a collaborative alliance element to it where players can win together. Um, I know that, you know, you're trying to, there can only be one on the throne, but, you know, they, nobody takes the throne in Game of Thrones on their own. They have other houses supporting them. So I think that um, that's the one thing that's kind of missing for me, but I do enjoy it. I like to play Game of Thrones, um, and uh, I like that it's another immersive game that um, really makes me feel like I'm, I'm part of that story. Um, I've always enjoyed the map of Westeros, so it's nice to be able to really get uh, involved in that with all the different castles. It's very familiar and, like I said, very immersive. Uh, number two on this list for me is Arkham Horror, and Arkham Horror with all the trimmings. There's so many expansions for Arkham Horror, and I think at this point, if I'm going to play Arkham Horror, I want the whole experience. I want Dunwich, and I want Kingsport, and I want Innsmouth, and I want all that stuff in there, as much as we can pack in. And we know that it's something that's going to take a couple of tables to uh, pull off, and it's going to be a long slog. It's, uh, it's one of those... Thursday, we'll set it up. Friday, we'll play it. Saturday, we'll finish playing it. And Sunday, we'll put it away. That sort of a thing. Four-day weekend. Um, doesn't really take that long to play it, but it is a long game. But it's uh, it's very thematic. Uh, I really enjoy the Lovecraftian um, genre. Uh, it's one of my favorite uh, horror genres. And so I think this is a good game. And it's one of the few cooperative games where I do feel like everybody is doing their own thing. You are working together, but it's it's one of the few cooperative games that uh, I think does well uh, to combat the alpha gamer uh, syndrome. And it doesn't feel like the uh, the AI or how the, the board the game itself is reacting to the players or how the players react to it. it doesn't feel so artificial, which some cooperative games, it does feel that way to me uh, a little bit. So I won't name names, not in this video anyway, but um, I think that Arkham Horror is a really good cooperative game and uh, I, I enjoy how immersive it is. Uh, it's tense, all the monsters creeping around. Um, I love that sort of thing. Um, so that's number two on my list. And then number one is going to be a game that will surprise absolutely nobody, but it's got to be Dune. Uh, Dune, I think, is the most thematic game that's ever been designed. Uh, it's a privilege and a treat for me to be able to work on expansions for that and to immerse myself and, and more Dune fans into the Dune universe itself. Um, and even without a lot of the other variant modules in there, Dune is often a very epic game. Now, it's a game, of course, that can end on turn one, uh, but that is highly unusual. And I tend to play Dune mostly with people who know what they're doing. And those games tend to go two, three, four, maybe even five hours. Um, we're often going to turn nine, turn ten before resolving it. Um, and I did play the Avalon Hill version, which went to turn 15. So that was really my first epic board gaming experience was playing Dune. Um, most of those games did not go 15 turns, um, but they were usually done. You know, as a teenager, we would have a sleepover and we would be up all night playing Dune for sure. So that's my top five of the epic board gamings. Let me know what your favorite epic board game is and why. Um, there's not a lot of historical stuff. I don't really get into the historical games that much. I think diplomacy is about as close as it get, but it's not, you know, a specific battle um, per se. It's uh, it's a lot of other stuff. It's mostly the negotiating and uh, jockeying around the other players and trying to outthink them that appeals to me. And I know that some historical games uh, also do that. 
it's just that um, yeah, the his history as a theme is not super high on my list. I like fantasy, I like sci-fi, and then uh, from there, yeah, it's all it's all pretty much the same to me. But I want to hear about what games you like. Sell me on it. Um, I'm always up for uh, learning new games and uh, getting exposed to a lot of the best games that are out there. So I want to hear what you think. And what do you think of these games? Uh, have you played all of them? What's the average game length? Uh, is it an epic experience? Do you find it thematic and immersive as I do? Um, and if not, why? Let me know those thoughts as well. So thanks for watching, everybody. That's it for this one. We'll see you again soon.